Welcome. Today we're standing in Trout's Fly Fishing and today we're going to be talking about building a caddis box. For people who haven't ever built out the uh, life cycle box for this hatch, this will be a great video for you to learn about the whole life cycle and the flies that imitate them. Standing next to me is Yvonne Orchis. He does all of the marketing here at Trout's and they do this awesome series called Five Flies. And so we're going to take that same theme and we're going to talk about the five different flies you need for each of the life cycles of the caddis. Let's do it. It's going to be great. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to start with the adult phase. Uh, the adults are kind of like, uh, you'll see them with tent wings, right? They're, they're a small fly typically, they almost look a little moth-like. Um, how are you normally seeing kind of caddis adults out on the water? I mean, you'll see them in the willows, right? You'll see them fluttering around, sort of skating around, uh, trying to fly but being terrible at flying mm -hmm. along the surface of the water. Uh, you'll see them you know, laying eggs at the end of the day. You know, that, that vertical right. up and down right on the water. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, you see them, they're a pretty active bug. They're, they're going to make themselves well known. You know, they're gonna, you're going to see them. So when you see that kind of activity, in your head you're thinking, all right, I'm going to put on some caddis. So we're going to go over five adult caddis patterns that you should have in your box. Why don't you start us off? Yeah, we start, start you off with, uh, I'm going to start off with two. And I'll let you hit with, uh, this with three, all right? Very good. All right, so to start off, we're going to do uh, a Greg Garcia pattern, the mini hot. Uh, the mini hot sort of takes some pieces from the stimulator a little bit, uh, has the has the elk hair caddis wing. Um, it also has the sort of that hot spot at the, at the back, so it's really good for that egg laying phase. Um, but you can use this as a, a prospecting pattern throughout the day. Uh, another pattern, and this is going to be more for the technical uh, sort of flat water caddis situations, uh, is Alec Gerbeck's resting caddis. Uh, it's super buggy, uh, has a lot of uh, refined sort of elements to it. It's got a cool Wally wing right. with some CDC fibers down there, exactly. tickling in the water. Looks, looks super realistic. Uh, but that's what you need when you get into those really flat water technical situations. I think the maybe not as guess. great for like hauling a big bead headed nymph, which right. we're going to get into. But but if you're just going to fish a single, single dry, maybe even like a, if you're throwing a double dry to a, a riser Ooh. downstream, throwing that Ooh. reach cast, that kind of thing. How about you, Russ? Hit us uh, with three. So so I'm going to start with Craig Matthews X Caddis, and the reason I start with that, it's one of those patterns, just like a standard elk, elk here, that really kind of like defines a lot of what's in here. So a lot of these adult patterns, you're going to see a lot of elk. Um, it's a perfect imitation for that wing style. An elk uh, is also hollow, so it has some natural buoyancy properties to it as well. So the X Caddis is super cool because it's got a um, uh, a trailing shuck, so it it. it it looks like the emergent state, right? Right as it's kind of breaking through that water surface. It also uh, can be that egg laying phase. So it, it really has a great crossover, floats like a cork. Um, to change gears a little bit, uh, to leave the, um, the elk world, uh, in my hand here I've got the corn fed caddis from friend Lance Egan. Um, and that's the rubber leg version. And the rubber leg, it's just a little extra dancing on the water. And the CDC has a property that's very different than, than the elk. So if you're getting refusals and you don't have a resting caddis for some reason, uh, the rubber leg corn fed is a great option. And my, my fifth pick uh, for an adult is going to be Antonio's Superman caddis. And the reason I like the Superman here is this bright orange hotspot. So a lot of the creek fishing we do, which has a ton of caddis all summer long, uh, right? It can be tough to see something. I'm not as young as I was. Right. You have glasses, Russ. I have glasses. I so uh, a little bit of a hot spot's a huge advantage, uh, and the Superman's a fine, fine choice uh, for any of that. So again, these are kind of what defines uh, an adult look here, a lot of elk hair. Um, they almost look a little moth-like yeah. to the beginner. If you were going to be uh, skating a cast, which one of those patterns would you choose? Mm, uh, we've got it right here, the Poodle Ball. Yeah, Poodle Balls, Goddard's. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, the Goddard cast. Uh, yeah, Goddard's is a great, great, great skating pattern. Great skating pattern. Yeah. Um, really any of those, you just let them swing out at the end of the drift. And I think that's a great segue as we swing out the end of the drift into that next phase as we go down pupa. through. The pupa. All right. You want me to hit you with three of my favorites? Yeah, please. Three of a kind. So I'm going to go uh, the dirty bird. These are all sort of lives in, live in the same world, right? The, the dirty bird, 
the Guy Schroes Hair's Ear, and then the Sizzlin' Hotspot Squirrel, which is a Brian Schmidt pattern. Uh, all three of these patterns beat heads. All three of these patterns buggy. They have like a lot of those sort of loosely wrapped fibers Tons sort of going movement everywhere. To them. Right. They, they're, uh, what's the word? No, I'm not Pulsate gonna in the Pulsate, water. Pulsate, that's the word, exactly. Pulsing, what a great word. Uh, they, all, they all have that soft tackle. They all have that extra movement. It, I mean, the guys for his hazer is, is the reason they call that. So it's like uh, this it's is the money maker for right. the guys. Hey man, like other things aren't working. I'm gonna put the guy shirts on. It's a confidence fly, and that's what I like out of a good pupa pattern is a confidence fly. So you can fish these in a variety of ways. Uh, you can fish them underneath a hopper dropper. Uh, you know, as the dropper and the hopper dropper, you can fish them in a nymph rig. You can swing them, uh, whether you're fishing the hopper dropper or fishing them under traditional nymph rig. Uh, all three great options. Sort of a uh, three of a kind. In, in kind of the ways. beauty of your three of a kind, in my opinion, too, is like your drift doesn't have to be perfect right. to still have a perfect drift. Which is what I like. Totally. I need all the help I can get. Doesn't have to be a perfect dead drift. There can be motion. These are good uh, swimmers in the water so exactly. in, in that pupa phase. As they sort of rise through the column, you can you can get, get those triggered bites. Mm -hmm. So, how about you, Russ? Well, I'll kind of change gears a little bit, and um, this is Mercer's. Jiggy Caddis Pupa, and this is really a modern version of Gary LaFontaine's uh, Sparkle uh, Pupa. And LaFontaine's is, is a staple in every box, you gotta have it. If you're looking for the modern version, this is a wide gap jig, uh, Ump was 450, and uh, tungsten bead, right, so you get all those great properties of a jig with that classic imitation uh, of those Caddis. Uh, another choice that I'd make here, um, you know, I, I think, uh, Garrison Doctor Sweet Meat Caddis, just to stay on that same uh, train of a great jigged fly um, with a lot of movement that you can kind of swing out and it's it's a good crossover pattern uh, as we go one step deeper into larva. So those are five um, pupa patterns for caddis. Now we're going to move into the next five for larvas. Before we before we move on, I just want to give a little shout out to Jig Flies. The great is a uh, great as a dropper and a hop driver. They get down quick, hook point up. Hook, they hook the fish in the right spot. It's easy to, easier to fight the fish. You've got a lot of control As when a, you get them at the top of the mouth. I, I will admit, I may have uh, shied away from jig flies in the past, but jig flies work. Embrace them. They're they not just for the Euro Not just for Euro rigs, right? Yeah. You can find other uses for them. And I think the Sweetwater Cast is a great, uh, great option for that. So kind of Absolutely, stuff. yeah. Uh, you got to have a couple jig flies right. in your box. Let's get to larva. So larva, right? Uh, if you ever go down and you pick a stick off the bottom, maybe you're retrieving a snag, which happens a lot, um, and uh, you have there's there's all these little little textured, almost look like mini sticks on the stick, right? What are those? Cases. Case caddis. Filled with caddis. Uh, the bread crust is probably one of the best uh, case caddis imitations, but they, they, they create a little case around the larva yeah. uh, as they kind of get bigger, and then eventually they, they, they start to rise up through the column towards the They can also be like knocked, knocked free, right? They can Absolutely. Get knocked out of their case. Anglers wading sort of, through the water. Sort of fluttering around. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, so what do you like for, for that phase, that larva phase? Uh, so. I'm going to throw out a little little love to a local tire, uh, Shea Gunkel, with his splat roller. Uh, so it's obviously designed for the South Platte, but it works on the Arkansas, it works in the Colorado, it works on a variety of waters, right? Uh, so it has that trademark green, sort of almost chartreuse ish. Is that a word? Chartreuse ish uh, coloration, and then it has the blackhead. Uh, you have the, you know. Because when you pull one of those little larvae out of the case, what do they look like? They're green. Or chartreuse the with, with a blackhead. Black right. uh, so that's a great option. Uh, you can also throw bars uncased caddis uh, in that it has the same uh, same sort of coloration. Uh, has it's a little bit more it's a bit duller green than you'd see with that uh, splat mm -hmm. roller. Uh, but it's good to have a, a, a wide variety of that kind of stuff. And then it has uh, the little uh, little tufts, little tiny little leg tufts uh, that do a great job of imitating that stuff. And then finally, uh, the buckskin caddis. Um, it's a classic. It's under, understated in its coloration, so it doesn't have the green, uh, but it certainly produces, uh, especially on the South Platte. I love and the flat stuff. Pat Dorsey, South Platte legend, wrote the book right. on it. Right. Literally. I mean, uh, if you look in his boxes, there are literally rows of buckskin, right. and it really plays into what you just said with like, it's, it's a little bit more muted. Yeah. So you can come behind other anglers and potentially find some fish uh, where, where something a little bit brighter and flashier may. Yeah continue to make them hesitant. Uh, and there are certain eat. things that, that Pat does that I cannot do. 
like drift uh, drift wildly flat water and catch fish uh, on the first cast. But I can Jedi, fish flies. That, yeah, I can fish flies that he likes to fish, and they produce. They, they produce. So uh, it's a good fly to have in box. What about you? Throw a couple um, patterns out there for us, Russ. I'm going to start with something that uh, maybe isn't as traditional, uh, <laughs> but works really well. Um, is, uh, this is the Mini Mop uh, from Umpoy here, Hydrocykes. Um, and uh, it's a wonderful imitation, but the other thing it does really well, it's on a jig hook with a tungsten bead, so it's a dry dropper. But what it really does, a mop in general, like we talked about this in one of the Fly Flies in January, yeah. it'll slow down your whole rig uh, so you can get those deeper water presentations really, really well. And so uh, the Mini Mop's a great one. You can go giant mop if you feel like you'd lean a little extra confidence there and you want to feed him the double double cheese. He's good, he's good at seeing. See where your rig is with that one. You can see everything. Yeah. And then my last choice, uh, just because Pat really is such a uh, tailwater junkie, he's got the uh, the Merc Caddis here. And it's a really great, you know, that, that peaking Caddis look where it's just got that little chartreuse coming out of its shell. And yeah. like, what's happening out here? And, right. As soon as they poke their head out. Yeah. Um, what kind of mistake am I about to make? That's it. They didn't even know how bad it could be. Right. It can't be that bad out there. Uh, if you're it, it, not if you're the you know if you're the larva yeah. and you get smoked by a tribe, it's pretty bad. Right. But that's what we want as anglers. Right. So like it's pretty good. Right. Exactly. So that's uh, that's 15 flies, right? That are kind of like must have in yeah. putting together a caddis box. And so. The hope is when you're out on the water, you know, and you're seining or you're kind of rolling some rocks over, you can kind of see some of this different stuff happening and you know you've got five confidence flies you can put on for each of these life cycles. For sure. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, caddis is a great option uh, when you're seeing caddis activity, but it's also a great option if you're prospecting. If you're looking, if you're sort of in a period of time when you're not seeing a ton of uh, hatches coming up, and not a ton summer, of bugs, and, and it's summer, and it's warm and you're wet waiting. Right. Throw some caddis on, throw a caddis dry on, you can throw like a double dry, you can throw a caddis dry, like a caddis dry with a dropper below it. You can mix and match a lot of the stuff that you'll have in this box. So you might not necessarily be matching a specific thing that you're seeing on the water, but it's a great prospecting uh, bug. So check out our box. video on dry dropper rigging, yep. which will explain how to put together those rigs uh, for those kind of summer celebrations of why we go pick up fly rods and chase trout. Yeah, for sure. Um, Appreciate you guys coming down, Russ. This was awesome to be here. We're literally surrounded by flies. Uh, We're in Russ's happy place. Yeah, come check out the awesome selection of trouts. Um, and definitely make sure your boxes are stocked with caddis for the summer months. And good luck out on the water. Yeah. And because this is YouTube, we have to say don't forget to like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Yeah. And check out Trout's Fly Fishing Fly Flies. They are awesome, uh, super fun. These the guys, ones that have Russ in it are the best. <laughs> Check it out. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys.